welcome to a special edition of Stonewater Church Worship coming right into your living room. My name is Mike Harrison and I'm one of the pastors here at Stonewater and I'm so excited that we get to spend this time together that we're doing a unique thing where you're getting to worship together as a family in your home and we're doing it across the entire region that we call Stonewater. So we're glad you're with us today. We're taking this time to worship in home together because we wanted to say to those, our leaders at Stonewater that serve week in and week out and kids men and the parking team and welcome and all across the board to say thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the way that you serve and make it so that we can come and gather and worship together on our campuses. Now I wanna keep you up to date on some things that are going on at Stonewater. Well, this is the last year of 2020. Many of us are going, whew, we're so thankful. We're looking so forward to 2021. We're gonna kick off the year January 3rd with a new series called Broken in Need of Redemption. Well, we're just gonna raise our hand and go, you know what, we don't have all the answers. We found out our lives are kind of messed up in some parts, but that God is good and that God redeems broken things. He takes what we think is unusable and makes them usable. And Pastor Jeremy's got a great series plan for us to learn and to grow up into who Christ is. So you won't wanna miss that on all of our campuses. And speaking of redemption, Man, if you messed up getting your wife the perfect Christmas gift this year, we have good news for you. Ignite is coming to your rescue. You can buy her the gift of a, of a ticket to Ignite that's coming in February. It's a Stonewater Women's Conference where she can gather with other women to be encouraged and built up and spoken into and just to hear what God has for her. And she'll come back refreshed and you can give her that gift. So stop by a table in the lobby of all of our campuses or you can go to our website right now or on your app and you can buy this perfect gift for your wife. Don't miss this chance to redeem yourself for maybe not the perfect Christmas gift. Some other things we'd like to say to all of you who have served through the year, we wanna say thank you for your faithfulness that you've made it possible for the good news and the love of Jesus Christ to go out and minister to people in our region and around the world. And we're so grateful for the way you give your life away. We're so grateful for your sacrificial giving. And as you know, in 2020, it didn't go as we all thought. 2020 was just a crazy, crazy year that had all kinds of challenges that we never, ever anticipated. But what we discovered was that God had a plan and was still working His plan. And in 2020, our theme was to go for it. And we launched into going for it personally and as a church. And we launched into the largest expansion program in Stonewater history. And what we have discovered is that as we have gone for it, God has provided in extraordinary ways. And we wanna say thank you to you for your sacrificial giving that continues to make this possible as we continue to finish out these projects into 2021 so that more and more of our neighbors can know who Christ is and experience his life-changing grace. And what we'd like to say also is if you'd like to give to 2020, you're, you can still do that. You can go give through our website or through our secured app and you can be a part of God reaching our neighbors with His love forever. Now that you're up to date on everything going on at Stonewater, take a moment to prepare your family to experience God in a unique way as you hear songs of worship that we love from all of our campus bands and a message from Pastor Jeremy that is sure to encourage you and inspire you and motivate you to live 2021 in a whole new way.
No one could have imagined this year, 2020. But when I look back on this year, I see the goodness of God all over it. And I know you guys have too. You guys are campus pastors at Stonewater Church. You love your wife, you love your kids, you've got great integrity, and you lead hundreds of people every week. And so I want to get some of your thoughts on two passages of scripture today. This is the first one. It's found in Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. It says, see that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That, that specific scripture is the antidote for uh, SADD. Spiritual attention deficit disorder, <laughs> uh, which I realized this year that I struggle with. You know, we've, we've of course hear of attention deficit disorder, um, but I think what's possibly more uh, epidemic is uh, spiritual attention deficit disorder. And there's just so many things that are trying to distract us uh, away from God. Uh, things like social media. And so I realized in my life that uh, man, I have kind of a problem with using. Facebook in moderation. And so uh, I, I struggle with SADD. And so that that specific, specific scripture in Ephesians 5 there uh, spoke to me so much that I ended up uh, teaching about it at the Cleburne campus back in October um, and talking about how we have to make the most use of our time and, uh, and take that back. Because if we're just idly going through, uh, we are going to be just consumed into, into Netflix or social media or whatever it is we're escaping from. And we're walking in that, and we're doing that, we're walking as fools, not as not as wise people. Redeeming the time. Yeah, I thought about, uh, for me personally, just uh, sometimes walking as a fool uh, just simply means, man, you're trying, but, but you, things are uh, changing your decisions. You know, like 
Uh, this year was hard to make decisions, and sometimes there was a, a, a fleshly pull to maybe lean towards uh, decisions made out of fear, made out of uh, just uncertainty or not knowing uh, what was happening in the world, or, or you know, like, do I wear a mask, do I not wear a mask? What do we do with everything that was thrown our way? And then how do we lead a church? And I had to go back to God's truth. I had to go back to God's word and just trust him and walk in faith. Uh, I feel like God used 2020 to kind of reset a lot of things um, in our culture, oh, yeah. in our lives, in my personal life. So uh, I went to Walmart last night at 10 o'clock. Man, it's weird. Walmart actually is not open 24 hours a day, you know? Yeah. Black Friday, we went shopping and you go and usually it's a madhouse and there's nobody there. There's 10 people at the door and you go in and it's a good. So I feel like God used, used this to kind of reset a lot of things in culture uh, and in our our family life. What about next year, 2021? How are you gonna redeem the time next year? You're gonna seize the moment, seize that time and bring glory to God. Not, not like the fools do, but as wise men and women and followers of Christ, how, how is 2021 gonna be different from what you've learned this year? For some reason, it, for me, it's one of those things that I go through seasons where my prayer life is great, it's strong, it's there, and then seasons where it's almost non-existent. It's, hey, we pray before a meal, I pray with people, but actually just sitting and, and encountering the Lord. And um, man, it was really good to go through that prayer, that series on prayer. And I 100% agree. Uh, prayer does work and uh, like all of it. Yeah. Um, and so, J uh, Joey, you, you preached about believing all of the Bible. Uh, sometime in 2020. And, Wait, uh, we got to believe all of the Bible? All of the Bible. Oh, okay. Even the stuff that okay. uh, makes, it. it's uncomfortable because it just uh, defies all science and, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we've seen uh, at the Cleburne campus and all campuses, we see people literally get, get physically healed. Uh, sometimes immediately, sometimes it happens through through medicine or surgery. Um, but like, we, we're not afraid of praying, praying big prayers like that. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what he's in the business of doing is answering those prayers. So the Bible says that we need to hold tightly to God's hope and the promises of God. So how have you seen the promises of God at the Toller campus? We have a, a lady, she took in a foster child and when she brought her in, it was right before the COVID shutdown, like everything was about to go. Well, Right before that happened, they were going to ship her off to another home or to another place. And with that, when everything shut down, they couldn't move her. Well, since she couldn't go anywhere, she was stuck with this lady. And through that process, of, she's still with her now. She came to know Jesus. They've been coming to church. She comes to Elevate. And then I got I got to baptize oh, her that's cool. that's back awesome. at the beginning that's of the right. month. Uh, we're talking about the promises of God. And uh, every time God makes a promise, he comes through. It's just guaranteed. Guaranteed every time. When the Bible says it, it's 100% going to happen. And uh, even through 2020, like there's crap, there's junk. God's promises always prevail. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, like with the Godly Campus planting and prepping for plant and all that, or launch, uh, it seemed like every time we plan an event, every time we plan something, even up to our last launch team meeting, um, you know, the Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. <laughs> like Satan is trying to shut that down. But through that, God, God's promises prevail every single time. And God's working and behind the scenes, God's working and speaking to people. And God's working in ways that I never even have seen him work before. And it's so cool to see, even though like, um, there's, there may not be a lot of hope. There may not be, like when God promises it and when God's moving and when God's speaking, it happens every time. And it's so cool to see see it happen through other people and, and when God's speaking to you personally, like the things that he's doing. So what I heard from you guys is in 2021, we have hope. Mm -hmm. yes. We have hope in God, the promises of God. Mm -hmm. He's never gonna leave us, never gonna forsake us. And no matter what happens next year, good things are gonna happen yeah. when we seize it. Mm -hmm. Like when yeah, we seize right. the time, redeem the time for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm super proud of you and all that God has done in you and through your ministries this year. And I can't wait to see what God's gonna do in 2021. Who's with me, fellas? Let's go, let's go do this. One, two, three, Jesus! <laughs>
There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sin Every curse is blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished. But not the end we could have known. For the earth began to shake. And the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heavens roared? All hail, King Jesus! All hail, the Lord of heaven and earth! All hail, King Jesus! Eternity, oh, the King of Life was on the moon. For in a dark hole, too, where our Lord was laid, one miraculous breath, and we're forever.
Good morning, Stonewater families. I want to welcome you to our online worship experience as we wrap up 2020. Uh, you know, today, as we uh, gather online, I want to encourage you to leave some comments and let's connect uh, online to each other. I also want today to be more of a conversation than uh, me just preaching to you or speaking to you. Let's, uh, uh, let's have conversation back and forth. So I encourage you to leave comments. Also want to encourage you as families, uh, I'm going to give you three different questions throughout the message just to this discuss and kind of reflect on 2020 and uh, start dreaming about and planning for 2021. So uh, today, what I want to do is I want us to read through uh, a few verses of Psalm 103. This is a Psalm of David, King David. He was uh, uh, a man of God, a man known as a, a man who had a whole heart for God. And he, uh, he, he was a great man of worship. So let's read Psalm 103. says this, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With all my heart, I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Let's stop right there. You know, in 2020, this past year, many of us can say it was marked as a tough year or hard year. And sure, there was a lot of hardship. There was a lot of difficulty. But in spite of hardship and difficulty, God is still good. And God has done some really good things for all of us that I think it'd be important for us just to reflect on and remember. You know, I was thinking in my own life this year, one of the good things that God did for me that I didn't see was just the extra time that I had with my family. During those months of COVID that we were all kind of shut down and isolated, um, I got to spend a lot of time with my kids and a lot of time with my wife just on long walks together. And that was a special thing. That was, that was a really good thing. I also look at this year and, and just being away from people some um, made uh, inside of me um, just have a longing to see and to be with people, uh, uh, a longing to, to love people more. And I, I really believe that's a good thing. Uh, there's been some good things in our church this year. Uh, one good thing has is, is just been uh, to see God work in the middle of a pandemic. And we've been able to minister to a lot of people that are hurting this year. And, and that's a good thing. We as a church have, uh, have been able to bless other churches because of God's goodness, because of your generosity. Uh, we as a church have been able to help other churches that have struggled through this pandemic. And that's a good thing. So here's what I wanna do. What's a good thing that God's done for you? Spend about a minute with your family or a minute online, uh, leaving a comment, just celebrating and praising God for the good things that He's done for you in 2020. This word that we translate redeem or redemption in the Bible really has three different meanings. One of the meanings is to purchase from someone in order to belong to someone else. For instance, Jesus purchased us uh, from sin in order to belong to God. Another meaning of redemption is this, is to purchase some, uh, someone or something from someone for a new purpose. In other words, uh, how this applies to Jesus is that Jesus purchased us from the bondage of sin for a new purpose, uh, and that purpose being purpose of freedom, purpose of life. Now, the purchase price was actually the life of Jesus himself. 
What a huge price. It shows that you're priceless. The, the third meaning of redemption or redeem is this, is simply to pay off a debt. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus paid off the debt that you and I owed God. So we no longer owe God anything. Jesus paid off the debt of our sin. Now that's huge. And our response to that is the same response of David. is simply to honor God, to thank God, to worship God. I love this picture of redemption. Now back to our passage. It says, He redeems, God redeems me from death or the pit and crowns me with love and tender mercies. You know, this past year, I think we could say has been the pits, right? Like there's been a lot of brokenness that we've all experienced. And and in the world that we live in, it's just a broken world. And it's broken because of sin. As, As we look back on 2020, and as I look back on my life, there's still areas that God, I know, wants to redeem. How about you? What are some areas that that you look at that that you just have to admit, hey, they're broken. There's still some areas of my life that are broken that that I need God to redeem. At this time, let's spend just about a minute. Just go around and let's just admit our brokenness. We often say that Stonewater is a place for broken people. Well, let's admit our brokenness. So let's just go around and and admit um, an area of your life that's broken. place that I'm teaching at today is called Redemption Ranch. The story of Redemption Ranch is this. A a friend of mine fell in love with this place. It's a ranch that's been neglected and unused for years, but he saw hope and he saw potential in it. He fell in love with it and he purchased it this year. This year he's been uh, bulldozing and and adding fences and bringing in excavators and and reseeding. and, And the plan is even to bring in Uh, livestock and wildlife to make this a real working ranch. He's going to redeem it. You know, as he began to share with me his plan, I couldn't help but think of this is exactly what God does in our life. God falls in love with us, so much so that he purchases us, and he redeems every part of our life, giving us purpose, giving us a place to belong, and truly giving us hope. This place that I'm standing at right now is, is truly a place of redemption. See, it's an, it's an old swimming hole that was used years ago as, as a gathering for baptism. The, the place that I'm standing here, that the preacher would preach right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, uh, there's a hill beside me, almost like an amphitheater that, that crowds of people would gather. They would come from, from miles around. Kids would be playing underneath the trees and and the preacher would preach, often an itinerant preacher would preach, and people would give their lives to Jesus. They would stay here for weeks at a time, just worshiping together, enjoying community together, and then being baptized right here in this old swimming hole. It was a place of redemption. You know, that's why I love baptism. Baptism is one of the, my favorite things that we do as a church because baptism shows of what God does in redemption. We're we're placed under the water, symbolizing that we're buried with Christ in baptism. And then we're raised out of the water, symbolizing we're raised to walk a new life with new purpose in Christ. This past year, we as a church have baptized 147 people. That's 147 souls that have been redeemed this year. 
this year of a pandemic. That's a miracle of God. You know what I believe though? I believe God wants to do some more redeeming in 2021. That, that more people are, are going to uh, see God redeem their life. More people will be baptized and more areas of all of our lives will be redeemed. You know, as we wrap up our time, I want to ask you one more question. Here's the question. What area of your life needs to be redeemed? Maybe you're watching today and listening and, and you're just ready to admit that it's your soul, that, that you need God to redeem your soul, that you would step into a relationship with Him. And maybe the very first thing that needs to happen for you or you want to do is, is that you would be baptized in the new year as, you, as an act of obedience. If that's you, hey, let us know. But, but what area of your life needs to be redeemed? Is it your marriage? Is it your family? Do you want God to redeem your time this year? Maybe your health, maybe your schedule. What area of your life needs to be redeemed? Let's spend just a minute and, uh, and answer that question at this time. Church, I praise God that Stonewater is a place where broken people can be redeemed. I can't wait to see what God does in all of our lives as He redeems areas of our lives in 2021. Church, I want to invite you uh, back on campus next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to kick off the new year and we're going to dive deeper into this topic of redemption. Also next Sunday, we're going to have baptisms at every one of our campuses. If you'd like to be baptized as a sign of your redemption and what God has done in your life, hey, let us know. We'd love to baptize you and celebrate what God's doing in your life. Church family, I think it's an appropriate time that we go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to redeem our lives and to redeem us as we head into 2021. Let's pray. Father God, we just praise you. Lord, we praise you that you step into a broken world with Jesus, Lord. And Lord, you came to redeem us not only redeem our soul, but to redeem every part of our life. And Lord, I just pray for that. Lord, as we come to the close of 2020 and move into a new year, that Lord, we just look to you. And Father, we ask that, Father, you blow us away with the things that you do in our lives this year. Lord, show us that we belong to you. Lord, give us purpose in our life. Lord, allow us to live life just in worship and awe of you. Father, I pray that you, you just bring protection upon us. And Lord, use us as a church to redeem our communities and to redeem the world. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we thank you for your redemption. Thank you for redeeming us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>